What's going on, everybody, and welcome to episode 86 of The Book Bench, where this week we are reviewing a video that has been a long time coming because my reading this was a long time coming, that being Eye of the World, the first book in The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. This thing, right off the bat, thoroughly exceeded all of my expectations that I had for going into it, pretty much. Like, that's the the one sentence review is that it exceeded all of my expectations for it and the like i mentioned the read was a long time coming i did reading diaries for it all over the course of may if you've you know read the series and want to come back around and follow up on all of my journey with spoiler talks reading through this book you can go watch those but even before that i also did a couple videos on this sort of topic of wheel of time and stuff like that before even starting the book so a couple videos that came out back in April. Um, many, many years have I been wanting to read this book and this series, but in a way I'm actually kind of glad I didn't start until now because I, I don't think prior to 2023 I would have been super ready for it. Maybe late 22 I could have been, uh, but definitely not until late 22 at the very earliest. But with that being said, let's just kind of go ahead and jump into the good of the eye of the world at least as far as i see it and as far as my experience wet uh just starting right off the bat i thought the prologue for the book was great partially because it was pretty manageable for a book one prologue of an epic and high fantasy series typically at least nowadays anyway uh prologues or early chapters of fantasy books especially ones that are meant to be big and long series uh, tend to be very not manageable for a first-time reader they tend to just be kind of bunch of you know names bunch of words a bunch of stuff just being thrown at you and you don't understand what is going on at all uh, i would say the prologue to this book it was a little bit different than that expectation that i had going in um even though there was a little bit of that going on it was still readable enough that i could understand what was happening uh not to mention the fact that it is basically explained a little bit later in the book as well which was pretty neat you know kind of confirmed what i thought was going on uh, one of the other things that i absolutely loved about how jordan wrote the eye of the world was his way of trickling in little bits and pieces here and there of lore and history the little inklings of it that just kind of come and go at very specific times in certain situations and it's never like dumped on you i i just thought that it was all done brilliantly uh, the history that is built for this world you can tell is really deep but you're never expected to remember a lot of it you're never given a lot of it it just comes in little tidbits uh, over the course of the story and that made it really manageable to learn and also kind of keeping your head when it was brought up again later it's one of those things that i think will definitely expand and will get a lot more dumping on us a little bit i suppose maybe perhaps in lit later books but at least in this first book it was super manageable and i'm really glad for that i thought the dream sequences in eye of the world were very good throughout the book including one of them being pretty much an explanation of what happened in the prologue as i mentioned before which i thought was really awesome um i want to say there was only like one of these several dream sequences that i think didn't really have like an impact on me uh, but i think that one wasn't meant to have the same impact as the rest but most of them were just really really good stuff like some of the best dream sequences i've ever read in books and one of the comparisons i made in one of my spoiler talks was comparing to rick riordan on my shelf down there there are some books that he utilizes dreams perhaps a bit too freely and uses them as uh forms of exposition or essentially informing the main characters of what the bad guys are doing which is uh, good for younger readers so that they can understand what's going on a little bit better it's easier to manage but with that being said he, I, I think he uses them as a little bit too much of a crutch where his plotting and stuff is concerned compared to Jordan in this book which I thought the dreams were just really good and they were never used as crutches they were used as support for an influence on some of the development of characters and how they're feeling so that was something that I really enjoyed uh, that I really enjoyed. I also love how Jordan takes inspirations from what has worked in the genre before while not making it the same or a ripoff. Um, in particular, this book has a ton of comparisons to Lord of the Rings, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I just really enjoyed how this thing uses tropes 
uh, in ways that feel simultaneously very familiar, but also really just smooth and enjoyable and refreshing, even if they're not necessarily new. It was a very nice way to ease the reader into the world for the characters, into, you know, the history and the lore that he would drop occasionally, but also not letting it be so overwhelming that it's a little bit difficult to read either. I just generally loved the pace of the story, not just the pacing of how he dropped history and lore and whatnot. I really loved the pacing of the story pretty much the entire way through as well. A Rand's POV being pretty much the only POV for probably 80% of the book, 75% at the very least, um, I thought was very good. But I also loved that the multiple POVs being used when the group splits up uh, was done rather thoughtfully, and I enjoyed all those POVs. I guess, um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, there were lots of interesting developments and changes and stuff going on with basically every main character as well that by itself makes me uh, curious to read on and continue the series. So the way that uh, Jordan wrote all of that, making me want to read the next book more or less immediately was very good. Uh, made only stronger by the fact that there are probably that some of those character related things that I'm interested in learning more about are probably going to be a little bit more of a focus in the next book or two given the way that this book ends just kind of theorizing but since this is a spoiler free review I'm not going to go into any of those theories uh, specifically either way let's kind of move on to the bad of Eye of the World um, I can tell already even this early on that there are going to be a couple characters that get on my nerves throughout the series <sighs> one in particular for sure like even just a couple little tiny instances of something that one particular character would do or say or the way that they would do or say it just really 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 irked me even though it was such a minor thing so i can tell that uh robert jordan will excel at characters that are very dislikable uh n especially knowing what i know from others given that, you know, especially I would say Jordan's female characters have a quite a reputation for not being very good characters, generally speaking, uh, and especially since one of his female characters and potentially a second one of his female characters that already appear in this book, I can tell are probably going to be ones that I dislike throughout a good bit of the series. But either way, that's neither here nor there. I do think that the climax was indeed a little bit rushed. That was kind of a little bit of the feedback that I'd gotten before reading the book. Was that it was uh, rough, like unpolished, uh, that it was rushed, or that it was confusing. Like Those were kind of the general points that people had made about the very ending and the climax of this book. I was also a little confused, which meant that the way that it felt just a tiny bit rushed only hurt it a little bit more, but I don't think it was a bad ending. I think it's one that I'll understand more a little bit later in the series, and one that I still have yet to go back and read chapters 1551 again to see if I can catch a little bit more that time around, you know, even just on a first read. Because I, I would say that those last four chapters were all definitely a little bit shorter than I think they otherwise could have or maybe even should have been, especially chapters 50 and 51. But overall, I think the ending was good, despite it being a little bit rushed and confusing. There was also one particular moment in the middle of the book where an out-of-sequence storytelling type of thing was used with zero purpose. Like, it just didn't do anything or go anywhere. It was very it, it all it did was give me whiplash as a reader and it felt very dumb and stupid i've heard that jordan utilizes this type of technique uh, a couple other times in the series but anywhere else he does it they actually do serve a purpose as opposed to the one that happened in here where it was just like well what was the point of that um but yeah that was a particular moment or a particular chapter that did not work for me just because of that particular aspect but I was glad that it only happened the once. I'm just kind of surprised that nobody made Jordan change it because there was just no purpose to it. Either way, um, the ugly of the Eye of the World is kind of where some of those Tolkien comparisons are concerned. Yes, the Tolkien comparisons exist. A handful of them are valid. I'm not saying that they're not, and I'm not saying that they don't exist. But a handful of the comparisons are also severely overblown. 
people telling you that the eye of the world is a ripoff or a copy and paste of fellowship of the ring or lord of the rings in general whatever have you that those people are lying to you just straight up uh do not trust the people who are just like oh it's just fellowship of the ring but it's good like no it's not fellowship of the ring there are plenty of things about it that you can look at and say you know these are things that he very clearly took inspiration from from fellowship or these are elements of the story or even certain beats of the story where you're like okay well you can kind of see where this has been done before but it's never like while i was reading i never felt like i was reading lord of the ring uh in fact while i was reading if anything i felt like i was wondering where the lord of the rings comparisons were sure there were a couple that i caught uh early on but overall yeah, people telling you that this is a ripoff of Fellowship are lying to you, but also be aware that people trying to tell you that those comparisons don't exist are also lying to you. It's just kind of in the middle ground. You can tell Jordan was inspired by Tolkien, but he wasn't just writing Lord of the Rings again. Even the depth of this world and the kind of way that history is dropped and whatnot, you can tell that Jordan put a lot of effort into building this world he only wrote this first book to be familiar enough to the fantasy that came before it so that it could obviously be published but i think he if there is anything that he quote unquote ripped off or copied from any fantasy from before the series was published he surely did it out of necessity rather than because he couldn't do something original obviously as Everybody who's read the series, I think, knows by the time you get into the second book, it really comes into its own and does its own thing. But I did want to point out that, yeah, the Tolkien comparisons are severely overblown, like severely. The recommendation is kind of something that I don't necessarily feel like I have a right to give necessarily for the series, because like, do I really need to give a recommendation whether you should read uh, Eye of the World or not, or rather, you know, start the wheel of time or not it's kind of one of those things that like you should look at and decide for yourself i personally recommend the book and rather highly at that just because of how much i enjoyed it but with that being said we'll kind of see how that goes as the series continues for me it's going to be one of those things it's like a book by book basis it's just like okay well how much did i enjoy this compared to all of this and what's my recommendation like like what do i you know warn about a specific book compared to the last ones uh, i don't have anything to give here i just think that this book was really good uh it surprised me a heck of a lot and i definitely recommend it i found it very enjoyable and super promising introduction to the series because when it comes right down to it i went into this expecting a three star read maybe four but what i got was right around a four and a half star read which i then rounded up to five stars because of the surprise that i felt i having enjoyed it that much uh with but with that being said i love the book very much looking forward to continuing starting with the great hunt in july i'm very excited for that so stick around for thursday book binge episodes in july doing more reading diaries for that book uh catch up on all the eye of the world ones from may if you missed out on all of that i had a great time with all those and a lot of wheel of time fans have been enjoying my journey as well up to this point so that's something that i'm really happy about uh if you want to enjoy me on continued reading say if you haven't read the series or if you want to read sort of read the series along with me you can go ahead and do that feel free to do that i would encourage it it would be very fun to be able to talk about the book with other first timers as well beyond just veterans of the series who are watching me go through my journey but yeah that is basically my review of eye of the world i really enjoyed it i can't wait to read book two thank you guys for watching i'll be back on Thursday with a discussion episode about basically what some of you guys said about whether you prefer e-reading, audiobooks, or physical books, and why. So thank you guys for watching. I'll be back in that next video on Thursday.